February 10th, 2023. In this video, we are going to talk about two important newspaper articles, which are obviously going to be very important, very significant for the civil services examination. So let's start this video with the first important newspaper article. Now, this particular newspaper article talks about the three kind of payloads which have been launched by the SSLV, that is a launch vehicle of the ISRO. Now, these kinds of articles are very important for us because ISRO is a very important space organization and this part of uh, or these kinds of newspaper articles are important for the GS paper 3 that is science and technology achievements of Indians in science and technology indigenization of technology and developing new technology right so let's first understand the context of it and then we will analyze what are the payloads what is this particular launch vehicle right so the space organization of India uh, is going to or will undertake the second development flight of the SSLV on Friday from Sri Hari Kota, right? So the vehicle is intended to inject three kinds of satellites into the space or three kinds of payloads to the space. So the first one is going to be uh, EOS-07, which is ISRO's uh, mission. And the second one is the US-based firms Antares Janus-1. And the third one is um, a satellite of a Chennai based uh, space startup, Space Kids Azadi Set 2, right? So these are the three payloads which are going to be injected by the SSLV, that is a launch vehicle. Now these are satellites are going to be launched into 450 km circular orbit in its 15 minute flight, right? So now we will understand what are these payloads. Then we will talk about the SSLV, right? Which is a small satellite launch vehicle. So the first kind of payload in this particular mission is EOS-07. It is basically 156.3 kilogram satellite designed, developed and, real, uh, and realized by the ISRO. So it is ISRO's mission. And the objective of this particular mission is to design and develop payload instruments compatible with the micro satellite bus and technologies that are required for future operational satellites. So this is a very important mission of the ISRO and it is going to or it would design and develop a micro satellite accommodating new technology payloads in a quick turn around time and the new experiments also include mm wave humidity sounder and spectrum monitoring payload you need not to get into what these are mm wave humidity more sounder and spectrum monitoring payload whenever they are going to happen or these experiments are going to have any significant results then we will get the newspaper articles regarding it for now don't consider uh, uh, reading about them and we are also not going to understand them further so now let's understand the second payload because we have understood what is EOS-07. We have understood its objective. Let's understand what is the next payload. So the next payload is Janus-1, right? Which is which weighs around 10.2 kgs and Janus-1 is a technology demonstrator, smart satellite, smart satellite mission based on Antares uh, software platform and it is basically, uh, basic, uh, basically uh, uh, of the of a very small form in the United States. It is a payload of a very small set of, uh, small form in the United States, right? And the third kind of payload is Azadi Set 2, which is a 8.7 kilogram satellite. And Azadi Set 2 is a combined effort of about 750 girl students across India, guided by Space Kids India Chennai. Right, so this is also going to play a huge role because if uh, the students are playing a very good part in it, the chances are that these girl students will get into the space technology and they will obviously uh, make the space technology of the country better, right? So these are the three payloads which were there in this particular SSLV rocket, right? So what exactly is this SSLV? SSLV caters to the launch of satellites weighing up to 500 kg to low earth orbit. Now low earth orbit means less than or around sorry 450 kilometers right and this is where these uh, the payloads are being injected to right and that is why they have used the SSLV 
and it basically provides a low cost access to the space and it offers a low turnaround time and flexibility in accommodating multiple satellites and it demands minimal launch infrastructure and that is why it is very suitable for the projects which are very cost minimal or which require the less cost put to put the uh, satell uh, satellites into the low earth orbit right and this particular launch vehicle is configured with the three solid propulsion stages and velocity terminal module right so the stages there are stages to the rockets first stage second stage and the third stage and the upper one consists of the payload as well right so these three stages uh, basically sometimes it's the liquid propulsion sometimes it's the locket propulsion sometimes it's the gas kind of gas all right so basically these three stages here are filled with or this uh, uh, this particular sslv is filled with three solid propulsion stages and it is a 34 meter so its height is 34 meter its diameter is 2 meter and uh, it lifts off the mass of about 120 tons right so this is basically the sslv we have talked about the payloads we have also talked about the sslv rocket and we have also understood the context of it that is to inject three kinds of satellites into the space right so this is it regarding this particular newspaper article let's now head to the next important newspaper article now this particular newspaper article is important for us because we need to know the position of china in the russia ukraine war right because China is very important to us because it is our neighbor, uh, sometimes an ally, sometimes an enemy as well. But we have some kind of cordial, cordial relations with them. And that is why it becomes understand for us to understand the viewpoints of the Chinese as well. And where do they stand in the Russia-Ukraine war and what they are planning ahead, right? And these kinds of articles are important for the GS paper too. That is international relations, effect of policies and politics of development in developing countries on India's interest, right? So let's first understand the context of it and then we will clarify regarding what is the China's stand in this particular context. So now as the Western sanctions on the Russia progressively tighten, the country is increasingly becoming reliant on China. So that is why the relations between the that means that Russia and China are maintaining very good relations at this particular point of time. So China at this particular point of time has spoken as a largely neutral language. It has spoken like largely neutral language and there have been some instances which have come to light recently of China allegedly assisting Russia in its campaign. Now how does this impact India? India wants Russia to be on their sides in order to counter the China in some way or the other, right? It does not want China to gather a lot of power because that may be detrimental for India because China, India, border issues and all of these things. So India wants uh, Russia on its own side. But, uh, but Russia is tilting towards the China because what is happening due to the sanctions of the West in the Russia-Ukraine war. So China's formal stance on the conflict has been on the lines of all countries deserve respect for their sovereignty and territorial integrity and that support should be given to all efforts that are conducive to peacefully resolving the crisis. So basically it is taking a neutral stand at this particular point of time and with an emphasis on all countries China appears to be demonstrating its position as being equidistant from both the conflicting parties china says okay you are going to stay away from this russia ukraine issue but at this at this particular point of time despite this particular articulation china's attitude towards the conflict has been categorized as a pro russian neutrality which means that we will take we will not take the russian side but we will not always also go against them so they are taking a very pro russian neutrality now, Russia and China are engaged in comprehensive strategic partnership of coordination for a new area and despite the conflict, China has pushed ahead with strengthening its relations with the Russia. Moreover, China has painted the US and NATO as prime instigators of the crisis, crisis echoing the Russian narrative in this regard. So now this basically, China is trying to portray NATO as prime instigators of this crisis because of their own agendas. But at the same time, we cannot dis uh, disregard the fact that 
this particular thing is helping the Russians as well, right? Now, it also needs to be noted that in the past one year, since the start of the conflict, out of the seven resolutions put to the vote in total at the United Nations General Assembly, uh, Security Council, Human Rights Council and World Health Organization by the West against the Russia, China voted against three and abstained from four, which means that China is taking a pro-Russian neutrality stance, right? And in fact, China has only voted in favor of one Security Council resolution, the proposal which was raised by Russia on the humanitarian aid, which shows that there is a kind of tilt of China towards the Russians. And hence, China's portrayal of a neutral stance has many detractors, right? Which means that China is taking the Russian sides in many of the cases. Now, how much is China involved in the conflict? So, China has benefit, benefited immensely from buying cheap Russian oil and gas because all of the other countries like the Germany, which was the prime buyer of the Russian oil, uh, uh, supposedly did not buy that kind of oil. So, China replaced it or displaced Germany from that stance and, uh, and Russia became the prime supplier of crude oil to the Chinese. And the growing collusion between the two countries is not just limited to the hydrocarbons, but also extends to materials and technology, which is, which is, uh, which is what, which is a detractor from our pro-Russian neutrality stance, which have been taken by the Chinese officially. Now, while there is a strengthening of neutrality in China's rhetoric, the same is absent in its actions. Now, this trend and dichotomy can only be explained by understanding China's larger game plan. What is its game plan? So, China needs to keep Russia close and well supplied because Russia is its prime premier ally in its global, larger global ambition to undermine the US dominance. Because if it has a powerful ally on its side, what is going to happen? The US dominance can collapse in the future and at the same time china would like to keep its russia card so that in uh, in the eventuality of the conflict turning into the peace talks china could use it again or to gain uh, concessions from the west and perhaps the ideal bargain which china seeks is on the trade and technology front where it is facing a major issue challenge from the west of late right so what is the rationale behind the china's emerging attitude so on the whole, on the whole, China's efforts at the ends to encourage Russia in a limited and covert manner without raising alarms in the West seems to be intended to keep the war going. They want that the war should go on and on. And for one, it provides valuable time and information for planning a Taiwan invasion. They are watching it very carefully. They are watching the reactions of the West very carefully and they want that these kinds of inputs or these kinds of intel should get to them and at the same time they are also keen that they uh, they also maintain the stance that they do not trust the Russians right Chinese trust no one at the same time so China wants that in uh, China and it is in the best interest to keep the Russians away from the West they should not remain uh, they should remain divided and they should not team up as it happened in the 19th century, which led to the collapse of the Chinese, right? So, 100 years of humiliation came afterwards when the Russia and the West uh, colluded with each other and China was left to feed off for themselves in the 19th century, right? So, this should not happen. This is why the Chinese are seeking it very carefully. They are seeing it very, very carefully what is happening on in the world, right? And moreover, with the conflict prolonging, the West will be distracted from the Indo-Pacific Indo theater and the Russia will be left weakened to pose any threat to China's growing influence in the post-Soviet space, right? Post-Soviet space means the countries like Kazakhstan, uh, Tajikistan, all of these countries where Russia has a kind of influence because all of these are the post-Soviet countries that they are they came about uh, by the fall of the Soviet Union, right? So China wants to maintain their influence in these particular countries, and if Russia is engaged in the in the Russia-Ukraine war. Then what is going to happen? The influence of the Chinese in this particular areas, which are the post-Soviet countries, these this is going to increase. 
right? And at the same time, China can fill the economic void in Russia left by the withdrawal of the Western investment and technology while engineering an economic recovery for itself. It can, but it can make products for the Russians when the when the West do not want the Chinese products, but China has found a new market in the Russia. Now, China can also build up its strategic reserves and capabilities during the crisis to prepare for an inevitable hostile uh, period of relations with the US in a post Ukraine scenario. And this is the bigger game plan of the Chinese, right? So we have talked about the game plan of the Chinese. We have talked about the Russia Ukraine conflict and how Chinese are benefiting from it. So this is it regarding this particular newspaper article. And this is it for the video. Thank you from my side. Do like and share the video and subscribe to this channel. Have a good day. Bye.